Now, in some previous examples, we've looked at how to do decision statements. However, it's always been a decision against a fixed value. So now we want to look at what happens if we were to define two or more values. What would happen then? So we're going to come over here to Lucid Chart, and we're going to start a flow chart just like we normally would, adding a start terminator. Now I'm going to define two different variables, and there's two ways I can do this. I'm going to use a process chart, and then I might come in here and say something like x equals 0, and then I'll do shift enter and say y equals 0 like that. So this way it defines the fact that, hey, I have two different settings. Or I could come in and use another process chart box like that and specify it so each variable is defined independently. Now, there really isn't a right way to do this. It all depends upon what does your professor or what does your manager want to see. So sometimes you'll see people say, look, every logical implementation, and they say, you know what, that means that you can put, define more than one variable in one process box. Other people go, no, it needs to be every individual process, and therefore we want separate ones. Both are right. It's just kind of up to you. Now, you might think, ooh, this is starting to get big already. I can resize these boxes by grabbing a sizing handle like that. I'm going to draw a couple of flow lines real quick. And once a flow line is attached, you'll notice it stays attached, so I can once again go in and move it a little bit more if I need to. All right, so now I'm going to ask actually for some values for those variables. So I'm going to come here to my data I.O. box. And I'm going to resize this. Input your first value. And then I'm going to put X. Okay, So that way I kind of know what I'm doing. I've got a little prompt with this. Now some people will do a prompt, do an output, and then do an input. Some people will kind of combine them like this. It's up to you. You'll find that different languages have a similar type of idea. In the Python language, we have an input command, which allows us to put a prompt and get the input all in one call. Where other languages like C++ use two different commands to do it. Which is right, it's up to you. Follow what your instructor or manager specify. Now, I'm going to make this box a little bit smaller once again, just so we kind of keep things consistent. And as part of this, I'm going to be able to right click on it, copy, and then paste. You might think, oh, why would I do that? Well, now I get the same size. I got a lot of the same values, except instead of my first value, I'm going to double click in here. Let's say second and Y. So that's just a little way that I can kind of organize my information and make it a little bit faster and keep it neater and create my flow lines. Now I'm going to have a decision. So I'm going to bring out my decision diamond. I think decision diamond is easy to remember because they both start with D. I'm going to say X greater than Y. You might think, well, why am I doing X greater than Y? Well, I just want to see which one's bigger. So I'm going to have an output here. I'm going to specify print x is bigger. And I'm going to connect my yes line to that box. I'm also going to connect my input to my decision like that. Now, if x is not bigger than y, that means that y is either bigger or the same value. And so for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to do one more output. So I'm going to choose my data I.O. again. I'm going to choose print. Y is bigger or the same. Now I'm going to go from the bottom of my decision. This is my no. And if you notice, I really don't have a lot of room here. So when I scroll with my mouse wheel, you can see how it changes my position. I can do that. Or I can right click 
and I can move my position here. So now I get a chance to resize, rescale if I would, and I can reposition. So if I need to see something and I'm getting too big for what's on my screen, I can move things around. All I have left is my end terminator. I'm going to add that. And I'm going to drag from my final Y is bigger or the same down. And then I'm going to drag from my X is bigger or the same and connect to that line. So this has both the yes and no for my decision. It allows me to see how do I get inputs and use something that's not a fixed value. We refer to these as variables because every time X and Y run, they could be different. And that's what our flowchart is trying to show. Hey, I'm using these values. I create them in a variable and I can get values for them. And then I can make decisions based upon them. I can do other things. I can put them into my printout statements. I can use them to determine how many times something should happen. And we're going to see that in an upcoming video when we talk about repetition and looping structures. But we do have a couple more decision things that we need to look at. Like, how do we combine multiple things together? How do we make sure we have good decisions? And how do we nest decisions? So be looking for those coming up next in this series.